The launch system of TOS-1A integrates 24 launch tubes. The 220 mm caliber tubes used in the system are longer and lighter than that of the earlier version. The launch system is positioned exactly at the center of the armored chassis. It has the ability to rotate 360 without interruption in firing. The launch system is complemented by an advanced fire control system comprising a ballistic data computer, equipment used for observation for the commander and a rangefinder, and a control panel. The fire control system enhances the target acquisition and detection capability. The system has the capability to launch multiple rockets within half a second. The rockets can engage targets within the range between 400 meter and 6,000 meter. The MBRL system offers protection against small arms fire and shell splinters. Either side of the hull is installed with tight 902G smoke grenade launchers. The engine smoke generation system can further make the launch vehicle invisible to enemies. Thermobaric bombs and missiles are very effective in causing mass destruction, and Russia may be using them in Ukraine. According to the US Pentagon, Russia has fired more than 625 missiles in the two weeks since it invaded Ukraine, about a hundred of which were launched in the first few hours of the attack. Most of them were short-range ballistic missiles, and some were surface-to-air missiles. But there is a weapon that causes more damage than regular missile strikes. Thermobaric weapons, also known as aerosol bombs or fuel air explosives, are two-stage munitions. Russia has been accused of deploying these sinister weapons, first by the Ukrainian ambassador to the US, then by United Kingdom Defense Secretary Ben Wallace. Wallace said during a visit to NATO ally Estonia on March 3, how far Russian President Vladimir Putin will go, what weapons he will authorize to achieve his main goals, is unknown. But we have seen the use of artillery in large numbers. We have seen the deployment of thermobaric artillery weapon systems, and we are worried how widespread they could go. Footage from Ukraine circulating online, which shows Soviet-made TOS-1 220mm 24-barrel multiple rocket launchers capable of launching thermobaric weapons mounted. On T-72 tanks is yet to be independently verified, so is the use of such weapons in the war so far. But analysts and experts say it is only a matter of time. A thermobaric weapon can be used in missiles or bombs, and it is filled with an aerosolized fuel and toxic powdered metals. When it detonates, the explosive fuel disperses rapidly, creating a large cloud of fuel, which then ignites as it gets in contact with the oxygen around it. Royal United Services Institute research analyst Sam Cranny, Evans explained in a tweet. The blast causes two things, enormous heat, up to 3,000 kelvins, 2,700 Celsius, as well as a long period of relatively high overpressure. The pressure or blast wave created is not as high as a conventional high explosive, but it lasts for longer, creating more damaging effects. As all the oxygen burns away in the surrounding area, if thermobaric weapons are used against a building, the pressure itself can kill anyone taking cover inside. Ukrainian citizens are sheltering from air raids by sucking the air out of the lungs of occupants. Thermobaric bombs have been used by the Soviet Union against China during the Sino-Soviet conflict of 1969 and in Afghanistan in 1979. 
Western nations have been also using such weapons since the 1960 in Vietnam and in the mountains of Afghanistan. Rudimentary versions of thermobaric weapons, however, were already developed by Germany during the Second World War. Reports also suggest that Russia deployed the weapons in 1999 in Chechnya, causing devastating humanitarian implications, which the Human Rights Watch condemned. Thermobaric weapons are not yet banned, but there are plenty of arguments against their development and use. Even if a military facility is targeted with a thermobaric missile, the effect of the detonation is likely to extend to civilian areas. Russia did not admit nor deny using thermobaric weapons in Ukraine. Tula Arms Plant, part of the Russian state-owned company ROSTEC, announced the production of the 9M1133 F1 anti-tank missile with thermobaric high. Explosive warhead in 2019. 9M133 F1 missiles are fired by Russian Cornet anti-missile systems. Russian Defense Ministry reported in January that another combat vehicle armed with the Cornet anti-tank missile system was undergoing state trials for the airborne force. The vehicle is the Cornet D-1 self-propelled anti-tank missile system mounted on the chassis of the BMD-4M airborne assault vehicle. The Cornet Anti-Tank Missile System, developed by the Shipanov Design Bureau of Instrument Making, can take out tanks and other armored targets. Russia reportedly continued the testing of the latest version of Cornet D-1 air droppable self-propelled anti-tank missile systems towards the end of 2021, as it was building. Up military troops on its Ukrainian border. Ukrainian forces have also continued operations around what is left of the city of Bakhmut, which has endured some of the heaviest fighting of the war and has been under Russian control for several months. However, both sides claim to have repelled attacks against their forces, and it appears that neither side has advanced significantly. Russia has continued its missile and drone attacks on Ukraine, with an attack on 19 August killing at least seven people, including a six-year-old girl. Fifteen children were also among almost 150 people injured after a missile hit a theater in the northern city of Chernihiv, which is about 30 miles south of Ukraine's border with Belarus. Meanwhile, three people were killed by a suspected drone attack in the border region of Belgorod in Russia, and a skyscraper in Moscow was damaged in another suspected drone attack on 23 August. A suspected drone attack also left one of Russia's flagship Tupolev Tu-22 bombers ablaze at an airbase south of S. Petersburg this week. Russia's invasion began with dozens of missile strikes on cities all over Ukraine before dawn on February. Russian ground troops moved in quickly and within a few weeks were in control of large areas of Ukraine and had advanced to the suburbs of Kiev. Russian forces were bombarding Kharkiv and they had taken territory in the east and south as far as Kherson and surrounded the port city of Mariupol. Thank you for watching. Give your opinion in the comments section.